The Charge of the Light Brigade by Alfred Lord Tennyson Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death rode the six hundred. Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Forward the Light Brigade, was there a man dismayed, not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die, into the valley of death rode the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them volleyed and thundered. Stormed at with shot and shell, boldly they rode and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell rode the six hundred. Flashed all their sabres bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an army while all the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke, Cossack and Russian reeled from the sabre stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them volleyed and thundered. Stormed at with shot and shell, while horse and hero fell, they that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell, all that was left of them, left of six hundred. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made, all the world wondered. Honour the charge they made, honour the light brigade, noble six hundred. This poem is arguably the most famous war poem ever written, certainly in England. It refers to an event during the Battle of Balaclava, where a series of spectacular blunders led to a 700-man unit of cavalry charging a unit of Russian gunners without support from any other unit in the British and Allied Army. This fiasco took place in 1854 during the Crimea War, and it's worth noting that Tennyson uses 600 instead of 700 simply to make the rhyming scheme work. The charge of the Light Brigade incurred 278 casualties of the 700-man unit, which was particularly important since many of these horsemen were the sons of well-to-do families in British high society. Lord Cardigan in particular has since been accused of running his squad rather like a society gentleman's club rather than a military unit. The British press somehow turned this farce into a narrative of bravery and heroism, applauding the courage and obedience of these young men, and Tennyson's poem best exemplifies this angle. Forward the light brigade! Was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew someone had blundered. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. And he finishes, When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made, all the world wondered. Honour the charge they made, honour the light brigade, noble six hundred. Of course, Tennyson was the poet laureate, the British Empire's official poet, and it was his job to build a positive story out of what was, in fact, a pointless disaster. The poem makes use of a dactylic dimeter in order to convey the impression of a horse's galloping hooves. Cannon to left of them! Cannon to right of them! This very effectively situates the listener in the middle of the event, as if they are themselves among the charging horsemen. In addition, the rhyming structure of the poem creates a sense of building anticipation, with each, each verse containing two distinct units. The first features a rhyming couplet, and the second has a rhyming triplet. This is then followed by an unrhyming line that leads into the final rhyme, connecting the two parts, blundered and thundered. The unrhyming line effectively lengthens the final rhyme, and diffuses that building anticipation somewhat. Tennyson is often contrasted with Kipling, and here I think two useful comparisons can be made. The first, as observed by George Orwell, is that Kipling brings home the realism of war, whereas Tennyson is more of an idealist. Tennyson asserts that there was not a man dismayed as the Light Brigade charged to its death. Perhaps unlikely, Kipling's poetry faced the fear and urge to cowardice head-on, including an entire poem about a soldier who throws his weapon away and runs away from a lost battle. The second is that Tennyson's rhyming structures are often more intricate than Kipling's. He shies away from the populist patter song feel that too regular a rhyming structure can impose. I think the unrhyming lines in The Charge of the Light Brigade are an excellent example of this. <laughs>